Hello, this is Deborah Peters. Welcome back to the Deborah Peters Show. Thank you so much for joining me. I have a whopper of a show today. Today is all about goals, <laughs> mapping your future, and living the life that you desire. So, a couple sessions ago, I got into the difference between goals and re resolutions. And I, I didn't really get a chance to go very deeply into that, nor did I get a chance to give you an actual strategy to do something about your goals. So that's what today's show is all about. But before I get started, I wanted to thank you for being a part of my show and for subscribing and sharing and liking. And I want you to comment and tell me what it is that you are working on that you need some guidance with. So just below, stick something in the comments there. Definitely hit the bell. So once you subscribe, then you hit the bell. Somebody messaged me and said, I can't hit the bell. We have to just subscribe first. And then you hit the bell and then it'll alert you every time I upload new content. So here we go. So let's talk about goals and resolutions. So first of all, the difference between goals and resolutions is this. Resolutions to me are not really a commitment. There's something we say that, um, and not to say that our words aren't powerful because they are and our, our, our thoughts are things, our words are powerful. And yes, we speak things into reality. And I'm gonna tell you the difference between that and a resolution as I get down the list of what I wanna share with you today. So the difference between goals and resolutions is quite simply put, a resolution is, is something that you know, kind of like, yeah, I'd really like to change this thing about my life or myself. Like I really should quit smoking or I'd really like to get fit this year. I'm going to start exercising. I, how many of you know that I used to own a gym? So my background is in fitness and nutrition. And that's where I got my start with this whole obsession with how the mind the brain, the body, and reality all come into play. And so when I had my gym, the biggest thing I observed is most people lasted six weeks. They'd start in January, and they maybe, maybe made it through to the end of February. So what's up with that? Usually it was a resolution. It really wasn't a goal. What's the difference, you ask? <laughs> a goal is a strategy. A goal is a measurable outcome of a well-mapped and defined strategy. It's more than that, but it's that's a good start, okay? So this is the difference between a resolution and a goal. So what I would suggest to you is rather than waste your time, frankly, on just throwing out some resolutions of things that you think you should change, but you never really get around to because it takes work and it takes discipline and it takes alignment and it takes a strategy, which you don't know how to do, then actually get into this process. And I'm gonna walk you through this process of how to really truly map your future and go into this next decade super aligned with clarity. It's not to say it's static and it's only gonna be that, but I'm teaching you a process that you can then, you know, use again and again and again in every part of your life and in every part of your business, all right? So that's number one. Number two is there is a why behind the goals. And the why is way bigger than the excuses. The why is what enables us to get past the fear, the doubt, the naysayers, the inner voice <laughs> that says you can't do this, this is too hard. 
And it also gets us past the resistance. I always used to teach this theory and you know I'm just thinking of it now. So I used to I used to in my seminars I used to teach people that business was really about self-development. We have a tendency to in society to kind of separate ourselves from our business, but there is no separation. Who we are being in here with ourselves is who's the one leading the company or leading the team or doing the marketing or the sales or whatever it is you do in your company. There is no separation. And so when we have these goals, the way I see it is the goal is the carrot that is drawing us forward in our own personal growth and our own personal development to actually become more aligned with who we truly are, like who we were meant to be when we came into this body on this planet. And so with that said, it's the why, you know, the why behind the goals is the driving force every single time. And when you can get your values sorted, and clarity on those, and then you build the goals on top of that, then boom, now you've got a foundation to actually strategize on that will prop you up when the going gets tough, basically, okay? So there's a why. Now, the next thing I wanna share with you is that the whole smarting of your goals I'm sure you've probably heard of that. If you haven't, it stands for specific, measurable, achievable, timed, and realistic. Oh my gosh. Out, archaic. Parts of it apply maybe, but it's just like such an old concept. And, and I, wanna, I wanna unpack that for you, all right? First of all, when you're smarting your goals, Perhaps one of the worst things you can do is get too specific. Because when we get really specific, then we're ruling out all of the other possibilities. Now, I'm not saying that you should be uh, way too general, but I am saying that when you bring in a sense of general, bigger, broader brush strokes on your goals, then it makes it easier to be guided with total ease. And I mean total ease to the outcomes, to the goals, to the end result. But when you squeeze it down, you know, you're choking, you're choking the possibilities out of it. When you squeeze it down to having to be so rigid and so specific, then you're not allowing for the ease and the flow of it. And this is what this new decade is about. So that's why I'm, I'm not a smart goal structured teacher. Never was, never liked it, always felt it was flawed. Um, next is the measurable part. So yes, 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 yes. You do wanna be able to measure it because here's why. Values are intangible and you can have a value like poof, boom, you got it. You know, when there's the wiring inside where the unconscious comes into alignment with the conscious, you have, you have that switch, okay? And so, for instance, you could say, okay, one of my values, one of the things that gets me out of bed in the morning every day, which is what values do, is my happiness. You can choose to be happy right now. You don't have to, happy's not conditional. Happy's not, somebody loves me, uh, I live a certain place, my body is a certain way, my friends have certain cars, my clothes have certain labels. That's not happiness. Happiness is here and you can be happy like right now. So values are intangible, okay? 
Goals, however, are measurable. So it's X amount of money. It's, it's completely measurable and you can create metrics for it. Next is achievable. Well, this is the part where it starts to get a little wonky in my opinion. What exactly is achievable? It's whatever is up here. It's whatever's in your heart. Oh my gosh, it's what's ever sitting in your heart that you have, and you don't know what you don't know. You haven't even begun to know yourself. I can tell you that for sure. Even if you've been meditating for a hundred years, there is, you are so infinite. There is so much capacity to you that you don't even know how flippant amazing you are. Okay, so this whole achievable thing, I mean, what are you going to measure that against? What you've done in the past? Is that achievable? What you're just going to, and I see this all the time. Companies will take last year's numbers and they'll add on 10, 20, 25%, whatever the thing, whatever the, the number is. And they'll say, okay, that's our strategy for this year. And to me, it's so flawed, it's such a flawed premise because the capacity for greatness that lies within you is beyond any measurement. So what is achievable? You know, this is the burning question. This is why the smart formula is so flawed because you're, you're achievable, your, your achievement level your achievability is beyond anything you've ever imagined before. And this is what I challenge you to this next year, this next decade, is to actually go for it beyond anything you've ever considered in the past and to meditate and to bring that into your spirit, to invite that into your heart and your solar plexus and to let that guide you on what your steps are on a consistent basis that you commit to and be willing to allow that to change because there's always more that you haven't even thought of yet. So that's where I'm at with achievable. Now, whoo, realistic, wow. I'm almost embarrassed to say that that was actually a formula that I taught back in the day. But hey, you do the best you can with the resources you have. And it was the only formula I knew at the time. So <laughs> forgive me. So instead of um, reverse, uh, instead of realistic, I want to introduce you to a concept called reverse engineering. Now, this is how we're actually hardwired. We reverse engineer everything within our unconscious programming. So if you adopt this process within your organization, where you start with the end goal and you start chunking it down into achievable steps, then you can pick the biggest, most gargantuan goal that's completely at this moment in time out of your realm and you can create it. I did this process with a team and we picked, I believe the end goal that they had was a Bentley. And this was a brand new team working together. It was a brand new business. They had a, it was actually a, a mortgage broker and uh, it was uh, a net branch it was a net branch um, business model. And so they only had a couple of offices and everything was pretty brand new. And, and we picked a Bentley as the end goal and then we reverse engineered it. And that Bentley showed up in a fraction of the time. So here's how reverse engineering works. So on an unconscious level, when you pick that end goal and you align with it, then the next step 
before that is to figure out and ask yourself, what's the last step? What is it that needs to happen in order for me to know that I have that end goal? Now, I'll give you a couple of examples. So let's say that end goal is to buy your dream home. And it's completely out of your realm in terms of money or value or whatever. What's the last step to know you have that dream home? It might be signing the loan docs. It might be getting the keys from the realtor. It might be when the furniture's moved in. It might be actually going and looking at the home. You know, everybody's different. There's no one right way to measure that. So you've got to get the last step. Okay, so we've got the end goal, the last step. Then you drop all the way down the page. So this is gonna be on a sheet of paper. You drop all the way down the page and you write where you are now. And now you've got this gap in the middle. So then you create the fourth step, the third step, the second step, and the first step. And you build it out backwards. Now this is contrary to what your logical linear mind thinks it's supposed to do. And that's good. That's the whole point here. Because if you knew how to make that first step, you'd already have done it. You have to reverse engineer in order to break through whatever threshold you are hitting. Because we all have within us these comfort zones. So lay it out on a piece of paper and start to reverse engineer it and watch the magic happen. Because that's really the key. So throw away the smart goal formula and learn how to reverse engineer every part of your life, every goal of every part of your life. Now, what's not really talked about that I do that's different from every other coach, they all tell you to visualize. And I'm not saying you shouldn't. Keep visualizing. Keep visualizing all the time. And add into that process getting into the feeling of being that accomplished goal. Be that goal. I'm not saying have it. I'm saying be it. Get into it. Feel it. Smell it. Taste it. Touch it. Ooze it. Live it. Have it be in your cellular structure. Be able to just step into it as if you're it. And when you bring that onto the table with all the other steps I've given you, you will be so fierce and so formidable and so unstoppable that you'll just like, you'll have so much fun with this. You'll be like, bring it on. Bring on the next big, massive goal because I'm ready. So there you have it. There you have it. This is the way I teach it and my clients get extraordinary results, extraordinary results. And I would love to share more of this with you. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you get notices from my next videos. Send me comments so I know what you'd like to learn. And please share. Get this out to your tribe. Let's bring hundreds of thousands of people to this channel. Thank you for tuning in. This is Deborah Peters, The Deborah Peters Show, and it is absolutely my greatest joy to bring this to you. Mwah.